Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Russia failed with their attack attempt from Tanenke. Yes, here on a 3D map you can see the advancement of the Russian army they took four or maybe five of the fields but honestly saying this area is not exactly taken by russians because they are just the vehicle corpses and the corpses of the russian infantry the major strike wasn't going just through this road straight away not looking at the mines not looking at the fpv drones no they were just propelling ahead losing many of the bmps 8 out of the 12 BMPs were lost for the Russian army, at least. At the same time, Ukraine attacked the Russian convoy with the help of the anti-tank missiles, artillery, FPV drones, plus mines did this job, so Russian convoy was ambushed. Yes, yesterday I already told you about this story, but I had just received the information back then. Today I have the actual footages showing the picture of what happened out there. Unfortunately, I can't share it only on my Telegram, you may find it. Check in the link in the video description just below. What I can show you probably is just this screenshot with lots of the Russian vehicles. All of them were ambushed or retreated from those positions. There were no success achievement for the Russian side using this massive attack. I wonder why still Russians advance with that force. They've tried it already several of the times, but constantly failed with those. I mean, they had the successful attacks, but only using the small amount of the forces. Couple of the vehicles, some of the infantry, that was the Ukrainian tactics, which changed after the failed counteroffensive on the south. Only that might work in a modern day war. According to the Russian military bloggers themselves, this attack failed for the Russian army. It is all a failure of the Russian military command, they say, because they want to achieve new ranks. For example, some colonel wants to become a general, so he wastes his own soldiers with vehicles to achieve the ground and then show to the Russian military high military command that they managed to propel forward. The main thing is to show the result, they do not care about their losses. That's why Russian soldiers after this attack, as they say, start to leave their positions so desert from the war field. Mostly they've been detained by the Russian military police and later on will be put to the Russian prison. But this destiny is much better compared to just to waste their lives on the front lines. That's why Russia now sends new reinforcements, the new guys who are unaware about what is happening on the front lines. Because of that we have a short break on the eastern front lines, but Russia continued to assault in Bakhmut direction. Plus in Liman direction near to Terny, so this is the failed Russian assault. Guys, I had to blur this image because I didn't want this video to be really restricted hard. So sorry guys that I'm unable to share this video on this platform. Do apologize, but anyways, you may have the access in the video description just below. The other map sources show this information, so here is the Russian advancement, but it didn't happen as they show, but they were forced to go back. Also, the Russian advancement in this place, I would say under the question, I don't have any kind of the other source to confirm their territory gain opposite to Peromaiske. By the way, this Russian attack wasn't the largest for the last time or the largest this year. No, it was in general the largest Russian attack since the beginning of the full-scale war. If we speak about the actual fight, 36 tanks, Russia has never used that quantity before. Well, back in 2022 they advanced towards Kyiv and on the southern regions as well, but those convoys were not in the actual combat fight with the Ukrainian forces. Here they were. In Kyiv Oblast, the Russian long convoy was stopped, sometimes it was bombed by Ukrainian artillery and some of the bombers. On the south, the Russian convoys just occupied the vast lands even without any fight. But here is a real example of close to the Second World War style combat, with a close encounterment because Ukraine also had to use some of the infantry forces to repel the Russian attacks. Our soldiers were equipped with javelins and endlows. Also, there is a successful video of how our soldier targets the Russian BMP with the help of javelin, probably. I shared it already on my Telegram. Check it out. One more Russian convoy was ambushed near Novomihalovka. It's the usual spot for the Russian offensives. So Ukraine still has enough power to repel the massive Russian attacks. 
But as I say to you, this logic for Russians to advance with their main forces in the big convoys is just stupid as hell. And for us it's actually good that they do so. Here I'm not opening the secrets for the Russian command, they know that they are stupid, but for them it's the only way to get some of the ranks by taking some certain ground with their corpses. Yeah, in Nova Mihalovka Russians also were doomed, they tried to send reinforcements, but they have what they deserved. The Russian propaganda media doesn't show those images for Russian people. For them, SVO, so special military operation, goes according to plan. What they see that Russians occupied Avdivka, they take more ground, so they just scream hooray. They do not monitor telegram channels, even Russian military bloggers, who might share those images sometimes. The Russian men usually realize the actual picture, then they go to fight against Ukraine. And what they see is just hell. We have the detailed analysis of the videos where a Russian convoy was ambushed with all of the geo coordinates I shared it on my Patreon. But here you can see the images that it really happened. The Russian assault bogged down, it was caputed and completely ruined. Recently many of my videos actually were restricted. For this reason I started to upload more content on my Patreon page. I upload there all day long the information that I'm not sharing, for example, on Telegram or on YouTube. Some of the unique content you may find over there. And by joining my Patreon you also support the job that I do on YouTube. Also, as you can see, we have much less sponsors on my YouTube channel. That's why if you want to support my channel, please join my Patreon. The link is in the video description just below or you may just scan the QR code available on the screen. I also created a buy me a coffee page, but I'm new over there, so we'll see how it goes. Also, I have my Telegram. I always say about my Telegram in every of my videos because it's very convenient for me to update the information on that platform. There is low censorship. That's why I share the images, some sort of the videos as well on Telegram. It is for free. You may join it using my personal link just below. Thank you so much for supporting me on other platforms. But I still like YouTube because it's the platform which gives the most broadcast capability. So many, many users are watching YouTube every day. There are no any comparisons for it available on the market. We're gonna get back to the military map review a little later. Now let's speak about the Russian Kaboom Day. The Russian military facility Ural Marsh was smoking today for some sort of the reason. It wasn't a drone attack, no, it, it was a neglectness, probably it's the proper word, I'm not sure, of the safety procedures in this particular factory. It is a military one quite unique where Russia produces their self-propelled artillery. We even have a video which local workers filmed. The fire started in one of the workshops. I don't see a sign of the military equipment in this particular hall, but later on the fire was so severe that it ruined all of the building. Russia produces the critical components for their artillery systems in that factory, so someone really smoked at the wrong place. The Ural Marsh factory is located in a very depressed area of Yekaterinburg city of Russia. This remoteness plus the concentration of the working people led to spread of the drunkness. I read it out from the Russian article. Even those who were not related to enterprise located in Uramash do not want to settle their households or live in the place. So for me personally, it's no surprise that something terrible is happening in the Russian facilities. Terrible for them and quite good for Ukraine. And this is near to Moscow city, the factory calls Elektrozalit. From the name we may understand that they produced components for electrical systems, wires and other stuff. From their website, for many years we have been following our mission to help bring light, heat, electricity to people, ensure the safety of variety of the processes and confidence in the future. 80 years together. In this case, were together. Well, probably they have other factories as well, but this is a crucial damage to the Russian infrastructure indeed. For sure, they also developed some of the systems for the Russian military. Meanwhile, the Russian offense minister Shoigu visited one of the Russian factories where they produce some of the munition. And just look at this 
high-end technology. They showed some of the equipment too, but mainly the job is done by women. They are sorting something into the boxes, probably some bullets. Yes, yeah, some of the carton box and couple of the wooden boxes. Looks like a 13th century technology as for me. Guys, please tell me what are they doing out there? Is it some critical equipment in that boxes that should be assembled manually? Honestly, out of clue, but this factory is used to produce munitions and first of all bullets. Definitely not a nanotechnology or something like that. Well, this stuff, this part of the equipment, I would say it looks modern, but this one is made in the Soviet Union for sure, as well as many of those chairs, probably there even from the Second World War. It looks more like a Chinese iPhone factory, something like that. As usual, Shoigu tries to show that he is smart over here, tries to tell how to do it, do it right now, over here, work hard. What is this? Russian soldiers? Now, obviously, those are the boxes full of munition, but could be used to deliver Russian soldiers back. The size sometimes might fit, but on this side, they have quite a good equipment. I would say it looks at least modern, but they show it just once in the video, and it's hard to say whether it's working or not. For sure, it's Western made and rushes under the sanctions. Actually, I like those kind of the videos because sometimes they help to identify the position of the exact factory and what they are doing there. Meanwhile, we have the conscription letter signed by Putin, so Russia will hire 150,000 more soldiers to their army. Usually those conscripts do not go to fight in Ukraine directly, but after one year of the compulsory conscription service, they usually forced to sign the contract with the Russian army and stay there. Also, Russian conscripts found that many times in Ukraine. There were lots of those servicemen on the Russian ships too. That's why we may say here that Russia increased their army in 2025 by 150,000 soldiers. Meanwhile, Putin again said that Russia will complete all the tasks of the special military operation. As they said at the very beginning of this war, the main task is denazification, demilitarization, and basically the occupation of Ukraine. That's what they're still going to do. So what kind of the peace agreements Ukraine should sign if Russia doesn't want to stop this war? Right about the Bakhmut direction and Chasif Yar. Russia definitely is more successful in this place. They're very close to the Chasif Yar. Chasif Yar is the beginning of the settlement line with Konstantinivka, Drushkivka, and and later on it goes up to Kramatorsk over here and later on Slovansk. Obviously, Russia is in lack of the forces to reach this place, especially with all of those rivers on their way. But nevertheless, they might advance to the Chasif Yar. I see that they are really oriented on taking it under control during their summer campaign. The most heavy fights are now ongoing in Ivanovsk. During the last aerial attack on Ukraine, Russia used cruise missiles equipped with a nuclear war had dummies. Probably the dummies used to balance a missile in flight, and they are used as targets for Ukrainian air defense systems. But the main tool for Russia are the aviation bombs. You may see how they may demolish the part of the building with FAB 1500. That is a very heavy bomb, and unfortunately Russia has lots of them. I mean, many more compared to the cruise missiles or any kind of the long-range weaponry. That's why we need F-16s as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the Russian air defense continued to target the Belgrade city. This is the acceleration part of the air defense missile. It was found just on the playground and also not far away from the place. At the same time, Ukraine starts to obtain lots of the artillery shells from India. Probably India is a partner of the Czech Republic in the military support for Ukraine. At least we got this information from some of the media sources around the world. India supports artillery shells to Czech Republic, and the Czech Republic just sends munition to Ukraine. The India-made artillery shells are much better quality compared to the North Korean shells which Russia has. If Indians care, they may do their job very precisely. I know about this stuff. Today, Ukraine downed a very capable Russian UAV, 4 post. For the capabilities, it is similar to Bayraktar TB2. It might carry some of the aviation bombs or missiles. And here are the remains of the drone. As you can see, it is like a small airplane. 
By the way, about airplanes, there will be a very interesting event happening between 17 and 20th of April, so very, very soon in Friedrichshafen, Germany. It is called Aero Expo, dedicated to the general aviation. From what I understood, it is the biggest one in Europe. I'm not sure if I go there myself, but I recommend you to visit it if you live nearby. It is not a sponsorship or something like that, no, I just love aviation and everything which is connected to it. Alright, Mike Johnson and the United States military support saga continues. As I said to you before, Mike Johnson is willing to propel a Republican way of the deal, it means that the part of the deal will go in terms of loan for Ukraine. At the same time, Mike Johnson says that they want to confiscate some of the Russian assets which are located in the United States to cover this bill. Well, at first you may say that it sounds really great. I would agree with that too. But there are some big bots. I'm not sure whether they are really able to confiscate Russian assets all of this procedure may go a very volatile and long court process, because obviously Russians will not stay calm about it, they'll try to sue against the United States officials or United States as a government. The second issue here that this new bill is not yet been looked through, supported, discussed, so this in particular might take lots of the time. In this case, the initiative comes from the House of the Representatives, from the Republican part of it, and later on will go to Senate for discussions. So Democrats not yet agreed on this new bill. What the MAGA company does here together with Mike Johnson and Trump, they want to block the current bill for Ukraine, which is on the final stage. It is over there. Senate already agreed with it, there are particular numbers, and please vote for it. I wouldn't say even support it, just put it for voting and we'll see. Let democracy decide. But no, 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 they have their own mind. So today Mike Johnson said that they have their own version where they will put the military support as a loan. It means that they're not willing to put the current bill for voting. Well, well, in this case, I would be very surprised if after those words he would put a current bill for voting. Still, I hope for it, but it's a very little chance for it to happen. So the MAGA group wants to extend the time for Ukraine being without any sort of the military support since the last autumn. They want to keep Ukrainian issue for all of the election campaign, for Donald Trump to have counter-arguments against Joe Biden. Trump continued to say that he will stop the war in a matter of one day. My friends, it will not happen like that. Putin, first of all, is still interested to continue it. As he said today, until all of the goals of the special military operation are completed. So Mike Johnson here continues to play against Ukraine, saying wise words about confiscated Russian actives, something like that, which is pleasant for your particular ear, but all of that is bullshit. Right, the new Afghanistan authorities gun completely. I'm not saying it loud of what they're willing to do, but you may read it just from the screen. Yes, they are barbarians as well as Russians. That's why now Russia invited Talibs to Moscow for some sort of the meeting. They are also looking to exclude this organization from their prohibited list. Absolutely no surprise over here. Let's go back to the Crocus City Hall case. Even Iran warned Russia about the threat to their security in the Moscow region. They said the same words as the United States of America with their warning towards their own citizens and also towards the Russian intelligence, basically, but Putin was blind and deaf about the case. They didn't even try to stop the attack from happening, but now they blame Ukraine, so they're interested in those cases to happen again and again for the future escalation probability in favor of Russia, and also to have the reason to consolidate the Russian quite divided society. By the way, today Iran lost two of the generals. The Israel Air Force attacked one of the buildings with those militants inside. So one of the generals was a very high rank general, Mohammed Zahedi. He was at the meeting with Syrian proxies. Well, what can I say, quite a precise strike. 
This guy shares his greetings from hell, accepting new members on board. And this is the picture from Damascus from the scene. It wasn't embassy as reported at first, it was the Iranian consulate. Well, no any longer. Here we have the statistics of the drone usage by both of the sides. So the blue one is Ukrainian, the red one is Russian. FPV strikes on infantry per month. Over here, somehow the Russian numbers go down. But Ukrainians just skyrocketed. We have many of the FPV drones produced and delivered to Ukrainian army. Well, actually, I'm quite surprised about those numbers because here I was sure that Russia would overcome Ukraine. They increased the drone production, but somehow they now lose in the counting. So this is the FPV and here we have the drone drops, drops from the drones, again skyrocketed in favor of Ukraine. Without those drones, the Ukrainian defense would have collapsed long time ago. They play a great role in defending and fighting against Russian attacks, as it happened yesterday with the biggest attack demolishment. All right, we also have the report about the construction of Ukrainian defense line. Here's what we see on this particular military map. So this is the Ukrainian, sorry, I choose the wrong color. So this is the Ukrainian defense line. It goes behind the Kherson city and all across this place in parallel to Dnipro River. Other defense lines too in Zaporizhia Oblast. I would say that if those images are correct, it means that those defense lines are quite reliable. In Donetsk Oblast we can see them too. The problem is that I don't see defense, robust defense lines near to Pervomayska in FDFK direction. Where are those? Well, just occasionally put in the place, it means that Russia has a chance to break through Ukrainian defense and go to the open fields, sorry again the wrong color, go to open fields in this area. Ukraine now protects Kurahava very well, so it's the next spot for the Russian attack probably after they occupied Marinka. Their goal is to propel towards Kuraho right now, but I don't think that this mission for them will be successful. We have more information about the Russian helicopter pilot Kuzminov, who hijacked his own helicopter, delivering it to Ukraine and landing it in Poltava airfield. The New York Times writes a big article dedicated to the case. They say that he got a fake identity, yes, it is understandable, and he integrated into the Russian community in Spain. He visited the clubs and wasn't really hiding. That's why Russians managed to get him even in Spain. Well, maybe not directly Russians, but they hired someone to get rid of, as they say, their traitor. Well, his biggest mistake was to leave Ukraine for Spain, but even in that case, the situation like that for him could be avoided if he would just stay calm on his place and wouldn't speak with the Russian community out there, because for sure he was reported to be in particular place by those. As usual, Russia does everything to find their traitors and to punish them especially after this huge media wave that was spread by Ukraine. If I was on his place, I would stay really calm, not giving interviews. I would try to hide my identity and I would go, well, not in Spain, but into a very remote, calm place. News from Turkey. The opposition party celebrates its victory in the key cities of Turkey. It means that Erdogan's party totally lost the local elections. That's why he continued to use his harsh rhetorics against Israel, trying to get some of the political points uh, over this topic, but in general he's just speaking, speaking, and that's it. President Erdogan already said that he will not take part in the next election campaign. At the same time, he's losing popularity among youngsters at first. And as you see, opposition force is really taking the ground in Turkey. That party is called Republican People's Party. It has nothing in common with the Republican Party of the United States. No, it exists quite a long time and was founded by Ataturk himself. So I believe that this party will take majority after the main parliament elections and the candidate for it has high chances to win the future presidential elections as well. My friends, now please do not forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And if you want to support my job, you may find some of the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.